When we start learning DAX, it's important to understand the difference between row context, filter context, calculate context, as these are the key elements of DAX to begin with. So in this video, we will try to understand what is row context in DAX and when to use this. Hi, I'm Sailaja and welcome back to my channel, Learn at Cloud Analytics. So what is a row context in DAX and when do we use this? So row context can be referred to as current row. So let's try to understand this with a simple demo. So here I have already uh, created something uh, to demonstrate you the difference between uh, using a calculated column and a measure and how we can uh, use them in terms of a row context. So I will try to create a new page and I will try to do this from the scratch. So for that, I'm been uh, using a table called sales table, which has uh, different measures and uh, different columns within that particular table. Now, in order to understand the row context, I will quickly go to my uh, uh, data view where I can look at this particular table and understand what are the different columns I do have in, within this particular table. So like I said, these are the different uh, metrics that I have or uh, different uh, measures that I have from the particular table. Now, I would like to create or understand the row context. So let's try to understand this by creating a calculated column because calculated columns are the uh, something which would try to evaluate the value row by row. And by default, when we use a calculated column, it is always in a row context. So, which means that when I try to create any calculated column, that particular value would try to go by row by row and it scans the entire table to evaluate that particular resultant. So, let's quickly create a column. So, I'll try to create a new column by calling this as, probably I'll give this name as column. So I'll try to create a sales column and I will try to refer to the um, columns which is my uh, unit price and my quantity. Okay, so what I can do is I'll just refer to quantity multiplied by unit price. Okay, so, so uh, let me quickly... Uh, zoom in so that you can see this uh, calculation okay so uh, I have I'm trying to create a new column which is my sales column which is a multiplication of my quantity and my unit price that would give me the sales column okay so now I'll hit on okay <clears throat> and you can see that the sales column has been created as an additional column within my table okay now how does a uh, Tableau and or sorry, how does Power BI understand that this particular row, uh, calculation has to be multiplied against this particular row, right? So column is something or the calculated column is by default is in a row context, which means that whenever you specify that particular column within that calculation, it would understand that it has to go row by row. And that is the default functionality when you create a calculated column so it would always evaluate based on the current row in that particular table and would scan the entire table and that's how it is evaluating the resultant for the sales column by looking at what is the value for this particular current row so the unit price is this multiplied by the quantity and that's how it's evaluating the resultant against to that particular row and similarly, it would scan the entire table and populate the relevant uh, resultant of that particular calculation. Fine. So now let's try to see why only a calculated column is essential when we try to look at a row context and why not we can use a measure in this particular situation. So let's try to create the same uh, calculation by using a calculated measure. So I'll go back to my table, I'll create a new measure and I've already copied that particular logic and I try to create a measure with the same calculation. Now, if you notice, I have, I'm using the same logic in this uh, measure as well, but 
you see there is an error uh, being popped up so it says that it cannot find the name based on this particular raw value so it says cannot find name order quantity and the reason behind this is measures are calculated at the report level so they are not evaluating individually row by row and it cannot understand uh, when we say okay uh, please go and try to uh, get the resultant of these two uh, columns multiplied together at a row level so it doesn't understand in that way so measure cannot uh, uh, interpret that it has to evaluate the entire table row by row and give that resultant similar to that of a calculation column so therefore we would need to explicitly specify how it should be evaluated so the default uh, evaluation would always be at the report level so therefore uh, if we uh, convert this particular row uh, so in order to um, avoid this particular error message what we can do is we can just add a aggregation on top of this uh, column and that would uh, avoid in populating that particular error message so see the error has been now uh, vanished by the moment i have used this aggregation which is some uh, against my two columns on my order quantity and also on my unit price so now it did not throw any error as such as seen in the previous uh, scenario but this is something which we are not expecting to uh, arrive at right because if you notice um, so probably let me go back to my report view now let me uh, try to pull uh, probably I'll use a product name here and um, let me expand it and I'll go to my sales table and bring in my sales uh, measure. Okay, so the one that I've created right now. And also we'll try to add this uh, column. So what I'll try to do is I'll just bring this column first and then the other one. And also let's try to increase the font size of this value so that it is readable. Okay, so I hope it is readable and uh, yeah let's also increase the headers so that it is visible all right so we have these uh, two columns being added up on the report level now if you notice here uh, we have a different values shown up for the sales column and uh, a different values for the sales measure the reason behind is the way how this uh, DAX function is being evaluated so the measures are not been evaluated row by row so like I've shown in the table, right? So the measure is not calculating individually this order quantity and the uh, unit price. Rather, it is trying to get a overall total uh, sum of that order quantity multiplied by the total sum of the unit price and then it is giving the resultant value because when we say, okay, uh, we'd like to multiply just the uh, sales order quantity by the unit price the measure will never understand uh, which value it has to multiply this like uh, is it the row 1 or the row 10 or how it should be multiplied and therefore uh, in order to introduce this row context we would need to have a different option okay so now let's try to fix this particular uh, uh, measure calculation in order to introduce the row context in this particular logic okay so in order to introduce that let me try to um, keep this in a different line and i'll try to remove this parenthesis okay okay so now uh, what we are expecting is we need to have this row context introduced to evaluate this particular expression at every row for every row it has to go and pick that corresponding order quantity and do a multiplication against that row unit price value and that's how the resultant should be populated in my view so therefore in order to do that we have to introduce the iterators so the iterators are something which would uh, scan the entire table and based on which it would evaluate the given expression so in this particular scenario we would like to use an iterator function called summx okay so i'm using the summx for now 
So for this particular calculation, we would need to specify the parameter, which is my table. So I have to specify on which table this uh, expression has to be evaluated. So the table name is my sales table, followed by the expression, which is my order quantity multiplied by unit price. Okay, so now, so now if you notice it is not throwing any error rather it has just considered this particular expression as valid now let's come back to the report view to understand how these values have been changed so see the moment we have introduced the iterator within that particular logic to evaluate that value or to evaluate that expression based on a row context the values have been fixed and it is now similar to that of my sales column value right so in this way we are able to uh, introduce the row context and i hope you understood what is meant by a row context in dax functions within power bi so in order so let me quickly give a recap of uh, about this row context so row context is by default considered with a calculated column meaning a calculated column is computed row by row and the engine knows which row it is scanning as it is computed okay so a calculated column has row context by default now what happens when we try to apply the same formula in a calculated measure a measure is different to that of a calculated column because measures are always evaluated at the report level so in a measure there is no current row by default and if we need to introduce or if you want the current row uh, we need to introduce that so how do we introduce that uh, row context in our measures by the use of an iterative function so i hope you understood this video thoroughly and the concepts about the tax functions uh, so i think uh, understanding the basics about the row context and a filter context and a calculated context it is quite essential because DAX functions are uh, or a DAX is something which is a functional programming language and it is essential that we need to understand this because it might uh, seems to be simple but there might be some complex um, scenarios where we, we need to write some uh, uh, nested functions within the existing calculation and in those scenarios it's quite evident that we need to understand how the expressions are being evaluated at what context so that we can interpret what could be the outcome of that overall function so that is uh, that's it for this current video so in the next video we will be looking at what is meant by a filter context and also a calculated context and then we'll try to look at the differences among these three together so thank you